Verifying properties of geometric figures. This comes from 2.5 from the Nelson grade 10 textbook. And basically what you're going to be doing is showing that certain properties exist with different shapes on a coordinate plane where they give you coordinates and such. So you'll be working with three of the basic formulas that you should by now know off by heart. And those are, first of all, the midpoint of a line because you're going to be finding what they call mid segments which is just from the midpoints so midpoint of a line remember it's a capital M so you find the midpoint of a B if those were the coordinates and all you do for that formula is add them up divide by 2 and they're in the right order of X and Y just like coordinates so y1 plus y2 over 2. That's how you find a midpoint. Don't forget the brackets because you are finding coordinates. The second formula is the one that I taught you to draw using a happy face. And I can't, oh, there's my pink. So for this formula, the length of a line segment, length of a line segment, segment. Remember you can't find the length of a line because they go on forever. And that was one where you write L, lowercase l, equals, and this is the big long square root formula. And you can think of it like a little face. I find it the easiest way to remember to draw it. Don't forget that it has eyebrows. And all you do is put y2 minus y1. Now you could put x2 minus x1 here. Don't say, oh, my book did x2. Sometimes they switch them around. It doesn't matter because you're squaring them and adding them together. So it doesn't matter which order they're in. Remember, it kind of looks like a little happy face. So that's the length of a line segment. And from way back when, a real blast from the past, the slope of a line. So the third one is slope formula. And I always taught my students to think of Elmer Fudd, if you know who Elmer Fudd is from Bugs Bunny cartoons. And Elmer Fudd was always trying to catch the waskly wabbit. So if he were to say this, he'd say the wise over the one. So that means the wise go on top. I have students that mix that up. So I was trying to think of something that would make it easier to remember. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And remembering that if you multiply the slope from 1 and m2 together and you get negative 1, then slopes are perpendicular. Uh, perpendicular. And that means right angles, right? Sometimes you might call it a right triangle or perpendicular, they're asking for the same thing. And for instance, if I had um, one slope as a third and the other one was minus three, I'd multiply that and that would be negative one. So that would show that they are perpendicular. And if the slopes are the same, of course, you know, that means they're parallel. Okay, so those are our three main formulas that we're going to be working with. And now I'm going to um, pull up three word problems from your textbook numbers 8, 10, and 15, because I looked through them and I thought, oh, if I was a student, I might find this a little bit uh, difficult to understand. So the first one says a triangle has vertices minus 5, 4, 1, 8, minus 1, minus 2. Show that the height from D is also the median from D. When I first read this, I thought, I'm not really sure what they're asking for here, but here we go. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here I put it on a coordinate plane, use graph paper. If you have graph paper, always use it because it just makes things so much easier. So you're trying to show that the height from D is the same as the median from D. So remember that if you were to prove that, you're trying to prove that the height, uh, let's, let's find the midpoint first and then maybe it'll make more sense. So is the median from. So we're looking for the midpoint of EF. So I'm going to write 
midpoint of EF. And note it's a capital M, not the small m, which is used for slope. So I add the x's up, so I get 1 plus minus 1 over 2, and a bracket. And the y coordinates are 8 plus minus 2 divided by 2. And that's going to give me the point 0 and this would be 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3. Look at that. It's right there. So that's the midpoint. Um, let's call it let's call it G. G equals 0, 3. Okay, so if the height is the same as a median, remember that a median goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the other side. So if my median is going from here to here, and I want to show that it's also the height, remember the height is a perpendicular to the opposite side. When you're trying to find the height of a triangle, um, let me just draw a sketch of one here that wouldn't be. So let's go something like this. So if I want to show um, where the median is, the median would be halfway between these two. Um, I really wanted to make this longer. Let's just stretch this down a bit. Okay, so well, my pen's not working very well. So the height would be like this, right? There's my right angle. This would give me the height. But the median would be from the midpoint to here. So this would be the median. So it's kind of a confusing question because it doesn't look like it's anything, doesn't look like it's anything special till you try to do it and you go, whoa, just a minute here. So what this is saying then is that this line from here to here is also the height. Okay, so it's it's easier to think of the median also being the height. This is the median. But if this is a right angle, then this is also the height. And that's all they were trying to get at. Okay, so how do I prove that this is also the height? So I've got the median drawn, and for it to also be the height, it means that the slope of dg, the slope of dg, times the slope of ef has to be negative 1. Right, that's... That's a property for a perpendicular line. Perpendicular. Okay, so what is the slope of DE? Let's find each of these slopes. The slope of DE, D, not E, what am I saying? DE, DG, that's a G. The slope of DG equals, okay, so rise over run, so 4, minus 3, so I started with this one, I have to start with this one, 4 minus 3 over minus 5 minus 0. So 4 minus 3 is 1, and 1 minus 5 minus 0 is minus 5. So that's the slope of dg is negative 5. That looks about right, doesn't it? Because I would go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and down 1. Perfect. Okay, so what is the slope of um, ef? Slope EF. So I would do 8 minus minus 2 over 1 minus minus 1. Be careful with the minus minuses. So 8 minus minus 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10, and 1 minus minus 1 is 2, and that gives me 5. And so if I multiplied these two together, I would get negative 1. That also means that this is the negative reciprocal. So you could either do this little proof here, showing that they make a negative 1, or you can say these slopes are, let me move this up here, the slopes are negative reciprocals. Reciprocals. So you need a little statement here. So um, dg is the height and also the median. 
And there you go. That's question number eight. Okay, so I thought I would do that one just because I found it um, a little difficult to understand what they were asking. And this, of course, helps make you see how a median and a height are not always the same, right? It has to be um, has to be a right angle and also the median. Okay, so that's number eight. And then number ten, some of these are a little bit more work. It says, show that the mid segments of a rhombus with vertices at r minus 5 2 minus 1 3 minus 2 minus 1 and minus 6 minus 2 form a right a rectangle okay so the mid segments are the lines drawn between the midpoints of the sides those will be your mid segments so i need to find the midpoint of all four sides so we're going to start with finding the midpoint of, of, let's start here. If I run out of room, I'll go over here. So I want the midpoint of, let's do RS first. And you're going to get some fractions, so, so don't get too upset by that, okay? So the midpoint of RS first. What's the midpoint of RS Okay, so I'm going to add up the x's, so minus 5 plus minus 1 is just minus 1 divided by 2, and um, 2 plus 3 divided by 2, 2 plus 3 divided by 2. So that's going to give me a midpoint of minus 3, and 2 plus 3 is 5 divided by 2 is 5 halves. So minus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and 5 halves. That looks like that's right on. Look, 1, 2, 2 and a half. That's why it's always a good idea to do um, a sketch. Okay, so RSTU, let's call this A. A equals minus 3 and 5 halves. And we'll call it right here. Instead of calling it midpoint, we'll give it a new name. So minus 3, 5 halves. Now I need to know what is the midpoint of ST. So again, this is like it's really kind of tedious, right? You gotta do all this work. <laughs> you have to do all this work. That's what math's all about. So minus 1 plus minus 2 divided by 2. And we have 3 plus minus 1 is 3 minus 1 divided by 2. And that's going to give me minus 1 plus minus 2 is minus 3 divided by 2, minus 3 halves. And 3 minus 1 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. So minus 3 halves, so minus 1, um, 1 and a half, right? And 1. So that's right here. And that we'll call that B. Minus 3 halves and 1. Minus 3 halves and 1, and that is B. Okay, so you can see how this gets to be a lot of work. Now we've got to find the other midpoints. So what I'm doing is I'm going to find all these midpoints, and then I'm going to draw my little um, rectangle that's inside it. And I, I'm trying to show that they form a rectangle. So what does it mean to be a rectangle? Well, a rectangle means it has to have right angles, right? So let's, um, let's finish off these. Let me get a different color so they don't clash into each other. I'll put one right here. No, I won't. I'll put it over here. Midpoint of UT. UT. So add them up. Minus 6 plus minus 2. That's minus 8 over 2. Doing a little bit faster this time. And minus 2. Minus 1 is minus 3 over 2. And that's going to give me minus 4 and minus 3 halves. And we'll call that one C. Why not? Minus 4, minus 3 halves. So minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 3 halves right here. So that's C. Minus 4, minus 3 over 2. And finally, we need the midpoint of RS. Or are you? Are you there? <laughs> Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Did you read that book? 
and I'm going to add the x's together, minus 5 plus minus 6 over 2, and 2 minus 2 divided by 2, that's a nice one to do, that's going to be 0, and this is going to be minus 11 over 2, so that's minus 5 and a half, minus 5 and a half, and 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a half, and 0. Always double check. Okay, minus 5, I'm going to put 5.5 and 0. I probably shouldn't have done that, but anyway. If you're going to use one, if you're going to use uh, halves here, you should use halves everywhere. Okay, so there's my rectangle that's formed inside the rec inside the uh, rhombus. So this was a rhombus, all equal side lengths and um, parallel sides, opposite sides. Okay, now I haven't proven that it's a rectangle. I found all the midpoints, but now that I know what the midpoints are, I can find the slope of this line and the slope of this line. And if they are negative reciprocals, then that means there's going to be a right angle in this corner. Okay, so let's do that over here. Okay, so let's do the slope of AB. Slope AB. Can you still see that? Way off the page. Okay, slope AB. AB, AB. So AB. Rise over run. So Y is first. 5 over 2 minus 1 divided by minus 3 um, minus 3 minus minus 3 halves. So that's plus 3 halves. So 5 halves minus 1, that's 5 halves minus 2 halves is 3 halves. And this means divided by, right? So I'm just going to write divided by here. And minus 3, that's minus 6 over 2 plus 3 over 2 is minus 3 over 2. When you're dividing fractions, you invert and multiply. So times minus 2 over 3, and I get negative 1. Okay, so if this slope is negative 1, then I want this slope to be positive 1. Now, you, well, we'll do it just as in slopes. It's going to say you could probably count them up. So it's 1, 2, 2.5 over 1, 2, 2.5. So 2.5 up, 2.5 this way. And that's going to give me a slope of 1. But let's do it the long way. You can do it visually. I don't know. It depends on your teacher. But um, I would say if you knew that, that's pretty smart of you. So AB and we're going to do CB now. Slope CB. So I'm going to do rise over run again from C to B. C to B. So... Rise is minus 3 halves minus 1, minus 3 halves minus 1, over minus 4, minus minus, that means add 3 halves. Okay, so minus 3 halves minus 2 halves, that's minus 5 halves. And I'm dividing by, this would be minus 8 over 2 plus 3 over 2 is minus 5 over 2. And when you divide, you invert and multiply. And so I'm going to get positive 1. So this shows that this angle right here is a right angle. And if that's a right angle, then, and these sides are parallel in the same length, then all these angles should be um, right angles. You have to ask your teacher how many they would like you to prove. And you also have to show that it formed a rectangle. So if, if I was asking you to do this, that would mean you'd have to find the slope of all these, first of all. And then you would be showing that the lines are parallel. And if you found this one, and you found this one here to be negative reciprocals, then you would be proving that the other angles have to also be right angles. So the next thing you should do is find the length of these line segments. 
So this one and this one and this one and this one. So I'm not going to do all that because it's going to take me a long time. But you should prove when you're trying to form a rectangle that you have right angles and that the um, opposite sides have the same slope and that the side lengths are equal. The opposite side lengths. Okay? Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, let's go on to number 15 so that we can at least do three here. This one says that triangle ABC... Triangle ABC has vertices of this. Prove that the area of the triangle formed by connecting the midpoints of ABC is the one quarter the area of triangle ABC. Okay, so I've drawn the little triangle here. And you want to show that the triangle that you're going to make by joining the midpoints of the triangles. So we need to know what all these midpoints are this, this, this. This one's easy to find because this goes from minus 2 to 5. So what's half of minus 2 plus 5? Minus 2 plus 5 is 3 and half of 3 would be 3 and a half. So it'd be um, 1.5 right here. So this would be, um, well let's write it out properly. Midpoint of A, B equals so add them up, minus 2 plus 5 over 2. It's nice to do proper format. Teacher will thank you for it. Okay, so that's 3 halves and 0. 3 halves, 0. Okay, I don't like working with this color pen. I find it's just too hard to see. Okay, so what's the midpoint of AC? Add them up. Divide by 2. 3 plus 5 over 2. 4 plus 0 over 2. And that's going to give me 8 and 3 is 5 and 3 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 4, 2. This is 4, 2. And finally, the midpoint of AB. Uh, no, I did AB. Or did I do BC? That was BC. Do do. Okay, midpoint of AB is going to be minus 2 plus 3 over 2. Can you tell I'm trying to get to my dinner? You know, when you're tired, you make more mistakes, or when you're hungry, or when you're thirsty, even worse. Always have a drink. Minus 2 plus 3 is 1, divided by 2 is a half, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 1 half and two one half and two okay so this is one half and two okay so we're trying to find that this little triangle in here is one quarter one quarter the area of the bigger triangle okay so let's figure out what is the area of triangle abc Area, triangle ABC. Do you remember the area of a triangle? One half, Barbara Havrot. One half base times height. Okay, what? how long is the base here? So from minus 2 to 5, that's going to be 7. And what is the height of this triangle? Well, the height is this length here, right? How far is it from here to here? Well, it goes up to 4. So 7 times 4. 7 times 4 is 28 divided by 2 is 14 units squared. I'll put a little 2 there. Okay, area, square units. Okay, so I want to show that the area of this triangle, what is the area of this triangle now? Okay, so we need to call this, let's give it a name. So we'll call it D, E, and F. So let's put that over here. Area of triangle DEF equals one half base times height and one half. What is the base? We'll use this for the base here. It's a nice straight line so I can figure out how far it is from um, one half to four. So that's three and a half, right? Three and a half 
three and a half, three and a half, three point five. Uh, I want to put it as a fraction, so three and a half is seven over two. And what is the height? Well, the height of the triangle will be from here to here. Remember, it's a perpendicular to the opposite side. And so going straight up, and because this is a nice straight line, that makes it pretty easy for us to see that the height is 2. So times 2. 2 over 1, if you want, makes, might make things a little easier. So this is going to be 14 over 4 which is 7 over 2, which is the same as 3.5, 3 and a half. This 2 goes into 7 3 and a half times. So this was 14, and 3.5 times 4 is 14. Right? So here it was here, 7 over 2, so times another 2. So if I multiply this by 4, just trying to show you how you can do that kind of in your head. So if I do 7 halves times 4, that would give me 14. Right? So this is 3.5 units squared. And that proves that the little triangle in here, and this little one in here, is one quarter of the big one. Okay, and you should have a concluding statement. I would write something like, therefore, triangle... D, E, F formed by connecting the midpoints. Always make a nice concluding statement. Connecting the midpoints of triangle A, B, C. Make your work neat and whatever you do, don't use ink like I'm using. Triangle D formed by connecting the midpoints of A is one quarter the area of triangle. That's your proof. There you go. So that's your little lesson for 2.5. Again, most of this work, or pretty much all of it, is simply using the formulas. Some of them get, like I said, a little tedious, like this one here. Um, finding these lengths on top of finding the slopes. So um, sometimes on test, teachers will ask you to prove part of it. Obviously, doing all of it for all the questions would be a lot of work. So they have to test different things, right? Do you know all the different parts or things you should be working with? Okay, so that's your lesson for 2.5. I hope you're um, enjoying my lessons. And... Um, Stay tuned, there's one more lesson left in analytic geometry, and that will conclude this section for grade 10 analytic geometry. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. Don't forget, we also have grade 11 and grade 12 advanced functions and calculus and vectors for you to look at as well and tell your older siblings to watch. Bye for now.